And welcome back. It's Medical Monday with our hospital experts at East Cooper Medical Center. Today's topic is wound care, and Dr. Tim Osmond is here to talk about East Cooper's comprehensive wound center. Tim, welcome. Thank you. It's good now, to be back. Let's 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 set the whole scene here when we're talking about wounds. I mean, you know, we get the cuts and scrapes at home, we treat it at home, it's usually cleared up in about a week or so, but what's the difference between that type of wound and something that you would treat at the wound center? The, the, you mentioned that we do a lot of this at home and a lot of it's yeah. common sense sort of things that mm -hmm. we do with irrigating a wound to clean it out, get the any foreign debris or anything like that out, apply a little antibiotic ointment and a bandage yeah. to protect that. The, the wounds that we're going to be treating at East Cooper at the, at the Comprehensive Wound Center are those that are chronic, those that have lasted more than 30 days, mm -hmm. have not shown any clinical progress either just via the patient or mm -hmm. the patient has seen their primary care doctor and has seen no improvement over that period of time. At that point, uh, you can label it a chronic wound. They oftentimes will get referred to us, and it's oftentimes uh, a product of other existing diseases like peripheral vascular disease, arterial mm -hmm. disease, diabetes, diabetes is certainly a big player, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. chronic peripheral edema in the lower extremities or what have you. And if left untreated, what could possibly happen? It can be a nightmare scenario. Um, the, certainly when you have an open wound that doesn't belong there on your body, uh, the longer it's open, the greater the chance is it can become infected either in the bone mm -hmm. or even full-blown sepsis. So it can be a very dangerous thing. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and that's one of the reasons we advocate, obviously, uh, early intervention at the primary care physician's office. And if that doesn't work, to get them to the wound center so that we can get that wound closed up uh, as quickly as possible and get those mm -hmm. patients back to their normal life uh, mm -hmm. just to reduce risk. Absolutely. Now, I've seen somewhere where spontaneous wounds or something that just, a wound that just shows up. How does that happen and what is that a sign of? And a lot of our patients, because of those pre-existing diseases that we talked about, will, a wound will just emerge uh, with no inciting event, no trauma that they can recount, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, and there really is an explanation. And part of our job at the Wound Center is to find out why that spontaneously emerged. Okay. Uh, if it's an arterial problem, we need to get the ar arteries opened up. If it's diabetes uh, related, we need to get the diabetes under control. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot, Or if it's peripheral edema for that matter, we need to get the swelling under control because that's a limiting factor. Uh -huh. So our job is to find out, explain the spontaneity of that mm -hmm. wound and, and then solve those problems so that the wound will heal. And let's talk about solving the problems, getting that wound to heal. What are some of the newer treatment options that are, are available? Well, at the Wound Center, we are now doing what we call total contact casting. It's the way to offload a wound. That is to say, um, if there's a, a, a lesion on the foot that's not healing, a lot of times it's from friction and shearing. Uh -huh. What we can do is we can now place a patient in a non-removable cast for periods of time. Uh -huh. uh, that allows offloading such that there's none of that friction, none of that shearing, and as a result, a wound begins to granulate in and begin to heal of its own accord. Okay. Uh, so that's a big part of it. We use wound vac, which is basically a negative suction uh, that stays on the wound bed, oftentimes for a couple of weeks at a time, keeps uh -huh. the wound clean, uh, reduces pain it helps the wound base itself granulate in and ultimately heal mm -hmm. uh, of course hyperbarics which yeah, I was we've just going to ask you about that we, we uh, employ hyperbaric oxygen and what hyperbaric oxygen seeks to do is to address the common denominator of poor wound healing that is mm -hmm. a lack of oxygen in that in that wound base uh, so a good example of our kind of throw the book philosophy at, the, at a wound is we get a lot of the patients from uh, plastic surgery who've had natural breast reconstruction. Mm -hmm. They've had irradiated fields due to their, their cancer in the first place. So what we can do is do all these things. We do topical wound care. We all, oftentimes will employ the wound vac to help mm -hmm. the tissue granulate. We'll put them in the hyperbaric chamber because that helps reorder the architecture of the tissue such that it will heal. Uh -huh. Now, right quick with the last final question. If someone has a wound, at what point should they seek treatment at the wound center? I believe they should seek treatment at any point that they're not seeing progress. Okay. Uh, it should progress uh, in a mm -hmm. slow, steady manner. Uh, as long as it's clean and dry, it should begin to uh, begin to improve on a daily basis. If that stops or, or begins to slide backwards, mm -hmm. it's time to either call their primary care doctor or see us it could in the be a sign of something else. That's exactly right. All right, Tim. Thank you so much. Thank you for thank having you. me. All right. Remember, you can visit abcnews4.com slash experts for more information on this topic. More after the break. Stay with us.